What's going on, y'all? Today we got NBA Legends explain how amazing five foot seven Spud Web was. Oh, for y'all, my joint. Bro, let's get into it though. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I said five seven, man. Bro, <laughs> is this. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepper. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. I'm the NBA fan with Sean Kepper. Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. When they jump, you get up here so fast. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name, of course, is Sean David, and I welcome you to your weekly dose of old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to talk about a player who has been forgotten, yeah, for quite some time now, but who was very popular back in the days, especially in the 80s and 90s. Spud Webb, who won the slam dunk contest, even though he's only five foot seven. So, Spud, this episode is for you, and for you guys, please do me one favor: if you enjoy the content. Please subscribe to the channel. All right, enough said. Let's get right into it. Now the first thing you guys gotta know is it was very difficult to find clips about Spot Webb with NBA legends talking about him, but I did my best and I found a couple of them. The first one is from the NBA 80s documentary. Let's take a look. And at the 86 dunk contest, the rookie with the funny name stole the show. Spud! Did his mother like potatoes? I mean, I'm not sure. He looked like somebody child playing and he was grown. Well, how tall is Spud Webb? Five, seven. I, we've never seen nothing like that before. I don't even understand why he's in this. But Spud quickly let everyone know that he was in it to win it. Like, that's different, bro. That five, seven, that's pretty different. It's conservative, it's conservative but it still wins people and probably the judges. Seeing that, yo, bro, seeing him jump like, seeing him jump like that in person, I'm telling you, you be like, nah, what the fuck? Cause it just look he just gets up there so quick and so he's so so explosive and so um I can't even I don't know all the way. <laughs> like, like, I don't so fast think that so... people even realize what Spud Webb was able to do at his height. The amount of space that he had to jump to get to the rim because he literally could fit in a car seat. Palm the ball out of sight. Comes through the clutch. So much excitement wow. around the NBA. Unheard of. And I'm up in the stands. Throw it. Freak it. Backwards. Unheard of. His timing was so impeccable. Like, I don't know how many times he must have practiced these. I never saw. Yo, bro. I'm not nah, for real. Like, I'm telling you, when I used to, I used to, when I was like, I was like 15, bro. I used to throw hundreds of oops to myself every single day trying to get a dunk in. You know what I'm saying? I finally got it, too. I ain't gonna lie. It was my first dunk. Do that bitch up there, red. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But for me, it got a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? But then I quit, boy. I ain't gonna lie, stop playing ball and shit. But that's another story for another time. My point being, the timing has to be on point, like on point. You know what I'm saying? But he's at the point where, like, once you once you start dunking it, I ain't gonna lie. Once you get that first few dunks, bro. It gets to the point where it's like, all right, now it's really easy. I, I really know what I'm doing. Especially being short, bro. When you're short, your timing is really good, bro. Your time has to be almost like perfect every time, bro. Or else you're missing that dunk. No cap, like, no cap. Because the way the way you get up, you, you're going to come down. You know and I'm saying? If you come down just one inch too short, you missing that shit. You're going to be tight. Get rim stuffed all type. Saw him after practice. We never saw him in practice trying to do that type of thing. Really terrific to see that happen. And what that does, yeah, it gives so much hope practice to all the little men who play the game of basketball right around the country. Dead yeah, spots that, that is, I mean, just in how dead spot, freaky is just trying to lay them. But look at the leg part. Ah. It was just a that's, couple of them. He was a rock star at NC State. Uh, the fans, and I think the nation at that time, uh, was in love. Uh, with his game and his ability to do uh, some of the things that he was able to do on, on basketball. 
It's yeah, what was got probably, nowadays, if you know, not the clickers, right behind Max was probably the quickest guy that you had to guard individually Talented, with dude. the basketball. He was actually a freak of nature. I had never seen anything like him. Uh, never played anything like any, anyone like him. And on the offensive end, he was just a nightmare. Well, Spud was quick. You know, even though we were small, we totally different type of players. Uh, he was quick in the open court. Uh, he had a lot of his jumping ability was unbelievable. Uh, he can get off the floor, and he had a, a, a good ability, a, a knack of where to get his shot off and how to get it off. You know, we was the fastest one on the floor, so we had to chase each other around. That was kind of tough to do. Only five foot seven inches tall, Spud was largely overlooked in the 1985 draft. Taken on the fourth round by the Detroit Pistons, who already had Isaiah Thomas, he was cut before ever getting to training camp. Well, it felt like I didn't get a chance, you know, to show my skills or go out and prove myself that I could play in the NBA. Picked up by the Hawks, Spud would get his chance when the starting point guard was injured. I remember the first practice in training camp. I'm sitting there with a cast on my hand, and I see this guy whipping up and down the court, shooting, going by guys, giving assists, and I turned to Dominique and I said, I better get healthy quickly. <laughs> But once Spud had been given his chance, there was no stopping him. Uh, he would make the Hawks offense his own, quickly geez. winning the starting job. Oh, what a shot by Webb! Oh, he's a tough little customer. He has a lot of heart. I think that's the biggest thing for Rodney. He isn't afraid. He get in there, he mix it up, and you know, he gets bounced around off those big guys and get up and keep going. Spud would go beyond being an unlikely success story. Playing for the Hawks and the Sacramento Kings, he would become one of the league's steadiest point guards. But perhaps he'll be remembered most for his exploits in the 1986 Slam Dunk Championship. When big guys try to post him up in the game, actually we enjoyed it because we knew what was going to happen. He always said, you use your size, I'll use my speed. I think one of the first dunks I've seen him do was against the Lakers. Coming down the lane, uh, and it was Kareem and Magic, and I, I want to say it was Kurt Rambis, and he threw it down. So Webb in the open floor. And everybody turned around and looked at it like, huh, he can play. <laughs> you know, so we both, myself, Doc Rivers, went to Mike Fratello and said, we can't cut this guy. Between Tell myself, you know, When the little guy gets his head to, to, to round like the backboard, that means they done got up. I'm telling you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That means they, they probably jumping 40, at least 40 inches, you know? For real, five, seven, he, his head at the backboard, almost at the rim. That's, that's, that's a high vertical right there, man. That's, that's damn near how I was jumping, bro. Word two. But I'm like 5'10", and I got everything in the book. I was on the Vertimax back in the day. All that. You know what I'm saying? This is before all these type of workouts we got nowadays, bro. Just think about that. He out here. Come down the lane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 5'7", though. You know what I'm saying? That's different. Cliff, different. Dominique, Antoine. I mean, we're, we're busting our tails down the floor to try to get the ball from him because, like I say, if you're not with him, it's just, it's, just, it's just too bad because he's going to get down the floor and it's just that explosive, just that quick. So we were playing Atlanta, and I got switched out. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to give space him. I'm going to make sure he can just, you know, knock down a jump shot. He's not going to get by me. The next thing I know, he's by me. But not only is he by me, he's finishing at the rim over Detlin Shrimp, and I'm in the play trying to block him from behind. He was definitely too quick for me, even though I thought I could keep Spud in front of him. Once you're on the heels, you can't do it. And uh, that's what he did to Isaiah. He got Isaiah, Isaiah. Because look how far Isaiah's back from him. Isaiah's playing against that speed, playing against that speed. He's back on his heels. Boom, here comes the cross. The first day I seen him play, I went to the coach and told him it, it'd be a big mistake by cutting this guy because he's a guy who's going to help us uh, when the season starts. And unfortunately, he got hurt in training camp. And no one really got a chance to see what he can do. And I kept telling the coach, just, you know, just hang on to him and, you know, just give him a chance. First regular season game we played, he uh, had 22 points and 11 assists, and that was big for a rookie, especially a guy his size, and, and all the odds was against him to, to do as well as he did. I, I respect him a lot as a person as well as a player because he, he beat all odds. He's a guy who had a, a tremendous heart. Uh, it, he had more heart than a lot of guys I know because he's his will to go out there and do well and to compete. Double team. Now triple team as well. Oh, what a double no. team. When he dunked at home, they would just leave the seats. I mean, they would go crazy, high-fiving, jumping, doing all types of things because he was so exciting to see 
play a guy that small and a body that a body that small to go out and dunk the basketball. I remember seeing this man named Spud Webb. Well. <laughs> I remember seeing somebody. A, a feeling like I could be them. Like they like, nah, he five seven, I'm five seven, I'm, I'm five six. I, I, what the fuck are y'all here doing? Like with a big patch in the side <laughs> of their head, and it just was I one of the best understand. dunk contests I ever seen. I was a senior at UCLA, and I remember being in my dorm room, and we were all obviously watching the dunk contest, and I was like, is this guy? Are they for real? I, I don't think there'd never be, uh, in terms of an underdog performance like Spud, because we knew Michael and Dominique were special, and Dr. J. But nobody knew oh, Spud was you special that? like that as a dunker. And I know he's really pumped up. The drilling's gonna be really high when he got to Dallas, and uh, he went there, and he did some things that we'd never seen in practice. I must tell you, I did not know he was gonna do some of the dunks he did, because we never seen him do that before, because he never worked on it in practice. So it kind of shocked me with a few things that he did. Well, you know, obviously everybody in the, in the warm-ups is gonna be showing a little bit of what they have. You know, it's a packed crowd. Everybody was just doing their thing. You know, Neek was throwing it off the glass and, and dunking it as hard as he can. Tans was doing 360s and, you know, I was doing my thing and uh, along with all the other guys and Spud was just really almost like doing a layup. <laughs> it was crazy. You know? I was talking to him about how to impress. I told him because of the size that he, he had a long way to go that he wanted to uh, pace himself. I think you saw the guys. I think it was Michael and Patrick's reaction. Everybody knew he could jump, but I think the, the dunks he was doing and the elevation, it started to surprise everybody, and that's when everybody at that arena started to get behind him. You know, unfortunately, Spud Webb is one of those players who kind of got forgotten over the years, but I remember, especially in the 90s, he was very popular because there weren't too many short players around. I mean, you had Muxy Bokes, you had Spud Webb, and you had Earl Boykins when we talk about the really short players. And I just want to make sure that we don't get it twisted. Spud Webb was also a good player. He was not only a great dunker in the dunk contest, but he was also pretty good for his size. I mean, he had good handles. He was very fast, super quick there. If you go on YouTube, Keep a check for his highlight. Nah, yeah, he about to reiterate what we already know, man. Nah, yeah, I already knew Mike Bo. You know what I'm saying? To be in the NBA at, at, at a height disadvantage, you have to be extremely skilled. Um, Athletically, you have to have some athletic ability to be in the NBA at that, at that height, bro. You have to be some type of quick, some type of, you know, fast in some way. To be able to get around at that at that height, man. Um, but if y'all enjoyed, I know it's a duke. Come on the last reaction. Turn on post notifications. It's next to the subscribe button. Um, the man. Word.